Welcome to Orange Couch Discussions. I'm Jack Hadley with My Social Practice, and our special guest today is Gary Takas of TakasLearningCenter.com and Facebook forward slash uh, Gary Takas. And on Twitter at Gary underscore Takis, correct? That's right, Jack. Yeah, and we're uh, we're glad to have Gary here. I've known Gary for years. He's probably one of the foremost uh, authorities, in my opinion, on dental practice management. He is a guest speaker in many different formats. Um, huge experience in coaching dental practices, and and is now is doing a lot in social media, and is moving a lot of his coursework online, and so. We wanted to bring Gary in today, have him talk just a minute or two about the things he's doing that are exciting, and then talk a little bit about social media. So Gary, take a minute and uh, kind of get us up to speed and up to date on the things you're doing online. Well, thanks, Jack. First of all, thanks for having me here. It's, glad, it's glad great to be here and uh, fun to be sitting here with you on the Orange Couch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some of the things that we're doing that kind of are kind of exciting for us is that, you know, it's not a secret that uh, the economy is a bit of a challenge. Um, and we're trying to develop new solutions to help dentists access information that can help them develop a practice that's as profitable and enjoyable as, uh, as possible. In fact, I like to say it in lay terms to develop a rocking practice. I, I know you know what I mean when yeah, I say I know that. What you mean. Yes, I want to help the dentist develop a rocking practice. And, and really, what we're trying to do is help our clients and, and our followers and folks that come to our courses uh, help as many patients as possible. Uh, have great oral health, have beautiful, gorgeous smiles for a lifetime. And so that's our mission and that's our passion. And one of the things that we're doing today, and we're kind of pioneering through a new technology, is doing some online courses. Uh, you know, it's not a surprise that uh, it costs a lot of money for doctors to go out yeah, and take courses. Yeah, it does. It's tough. Uh, and it's not just the tuition. Uh, but it's the uh, air, the travel expenses. It's the uh, other related travel expenses. Might be hotel, might be meals. But perhaps most importantly, it's the time away. Uh, and it could be lost production in their practice, or it could be time away from their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And that's very expensive. And one of the things we're trying to do is to make education more accessible uh, for dentists. And so we've uh, introduced some online courses, and we like to call it, uh, you know, powerful continued education uh, on their time, anytime. Mm -hmm. And they can access this for information literally uh, any time at their convenience. That's great. Another advantage of that format is that doctors and team members uh, can listen to the information multiple times. Uh, we've learned in the education business that uh, people don't learn everything the first time through. Right. Um, it often takes uh, a couple of exposures to really understand the context of, of the education. Yeah. And so doctors can go back and team members can go back and listen to the information, yeah. uh, watch the information, again, at their convenience, in the comfort of their home or office. Uh, and we've also found that by providing this format, we're able to provide it very inexpensively uh, to make this kind of education more uh, affordable and more accessible for dentists. That's great. Even as well-intentioned as a practices are in getting everybody together to have a training session or a team meeting, there's always one or two people that, that aren't there or Absolutely. can't be there or there for, for, for whatever reason. So then they can go back and enjoy the training. Or a new team member. Yeah. If a new team member yeah. comes on board, one of the things I think is really important is for the entire practice to have a common culture. Mm -hmm. for the team members to understand what's important, uh, why they do things the way they do. Yeah. And I know from, from owning my own practice that it's hard to get everyone on the same page. Yeah. And when you bring a new team member on, that new team member often uh, doesn't have the full understanding of everything that is done in the practice. And having a library of educational material that can help a new team member understand why the practice does what they do yeah. uh, and what the culture is of the practice is amazingly powerful. Yeah. And it really helps uh, the, the entire team be on task yeah. and, and to be there and be present for their patients. And, and aren't you developing some of it inside your practice? Because I know in addition to consulting, doing consulting work, you you own a practice in Arizona, correct? That's right, Jack. Although I'm not a dentist, and, and clarify that for our audience, uh, although I'm not a dentist, I do own a practice in partnership with a dentist, Dr. Mm -hmm. Paul Nielsen. It's called Life Smiles Dental Care. And it's a real dental practice, but we use it in, in our consultancy yeah. uh, as a learning and teaching laboratory. We literally get to test things, uh, we get to try things that work, and then I report back uh, to our clients and, and audiences yeah. when, I'm, when I'm speaking and educating. Uh, we talk about what works, and we're not embarrassed to talk about what doesn't work, yeah. uh, because perhaps we can save uh, some aggravation and yeah. pain and suffering by sharing some things we did that, yeah. that didn't work. Sure. I think, it's, I think it's incredible that you have both sides of the equation that way. I think so many people, I mean, we're not dentists. <laughs> we don't own a dental <laughs> practice, as a matter of fact. But so we know guys like you who do those kinds of things. And in fact, a um, little plug for what we're doing at My Social Practice. We're actually 
in the process of uh, of deploying our tools and uh, at, at your practice. We are we are this close. Yeah, we're excited. Actually, it's about to be uh, my social practice is about to be launched at uh, Life Smiles Dental Care, and we couldn't be more excited about it. Well, we're excited to have a guy with with uh, the kind of background that you have uh, using our product in in your practice. So. So, uh, so th these new online courses are going to be available at uh, TacusLearningCenter.com, correct. correct? They are. Great. Well, uh, at the end of this little uh, video clip, we'll be sure to put that URL so people can remember where, where to go look. If I may, uh, as well, Jack, um, we've got resources on the site that are free, you know, as well. A written blog, I publish a written blog every Tuesday and Thursday. Great. Uh, we also are starting, starting a podcast that will be published weekly, um, and uh, we'll also have occasional video blogs uh, on their short video segments where I want to demonstrate something that are best shown in a video format. Great. And all of that content is free and available on the site, and our goal is, is simply to help as many dentists as possible uh, develop a practice that uh, is as enjoyable and profitable as possible. Great. Good. Well, before we talk about social media for a second, we got to tell the audience about your shirt, about riding <laughs> I'm out of uniform, <laughs> although uh, you made me feel very comfortable uh, uh, dressing casually today. Um, uh, today, I, I'm actually here in Utah. Uh, we're going to start a ride and learn trip. Uh, about 11 years ago, uh, we started a little division of our company called Ride and Learn. And this is where we take dentists and their team members on Harley Davidson motorcycle tours and combine it with very serious dental continued education. And this Saturday night, uh, you will actually be uh, our. Uh, uh, Edutainment. You're yes. going to educate and entertain us on Saturday night. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. So today we have doctors arriving from all over the country here in Utah, uh, and we'll be uh, enjoying three days of incredible riding uh, throughout the, the wonderful state of Utah, uh, riding Harleys, and uh, at night we do our continued education. And, uh, you know, the reason we do these, Jack, is uh, I really believe in the idea of combining work and fun. Yeah, you and the get that. Well, the idea is to take <laughs> dentists outside of the, the stuffy meeting room yeah. And, and provide an educational experience that allows the, the education to literally come alive. Yeah. And we've had some of uh, the most amazing people in dentistry uh, attend these courses, yeah. come to these courses, you know, as educators yeah. and, and speakers. And it's just our pleasure uh, to uh, do courses where we combine two things that yeah. we love. We love dentistry and we, we love uh, uh, riding motorcycles. And a lot of the people that come with you, the clinicians and the experts in the field, they're not Harley riders originally, but a lot of them ride with you, don't a they? A lot of them have. Uh, you know, some people, some of the viewers of, of this uh, video blog might be uh, interested to know that Gordon Christensen uh -huh. uh, has come on uh, many of our rides. Uh, his wife, Rella, has come on a number of our rides. Uh, we've had some a real who's who of, of uh, yeah. experts in dentistry come on yeah. these rides. And it's kind of fun to get to... Uh, uh, you know, sh break bread and share meals with some of these <laughs> people great. and, and uh, be able to uh, really uh, experience their passion for our profession. Yeah. Uh, you know, if there's one thing I'd like to convey, and, and it's one of the reasons why I, I think, uh, Jack, you and I uh, have such a good time when, when we're together, is that uh, uh, we're passionate about what we do. Yeah. And uh, uh, unashamedly passionate yeah. about what we do. <laughs> and uh, I love dentistry. I know you do as well. We love the profession and uh, we love helping. Uh, helping doctors uh, really develop uh, pathways to success. Yeah, it's exciting. Well, that, that kind of brings us to talking about social media for a second. I'm going to ask you just kind of an open-ended question about social media because I know that you're in a lot of practices. You speak a lot and, uh, and you're very familiar with what's happening in, in the social media realm. So just, just briefly, what, what are you seeing as maybe the challenges for practices as they're uh, trying to wrap their minds around what social media is, you why they ought to do it, where is it headed. What are just some of the things that you're you're hearing uh, out there? What if I may by by sharing my perspective on social media for yeah. just a minute, and then putting it in a context of of how can this benefit dentists? Good. Um, social media is such a great channel, uh, mainly because if you think about a typical practice, your your typical practice. At least the, the doctors that I have an opportunity to interact with through courses or, or through uh, clients and doctors that attend meetings, most doctors think of their practice as a big extended family. Yeah. Uh, maybe dysfunctional. Yeah, dysfunctional. <laughs> but a, little bit, a little bit dysfunctional, yeah. but aren't they all? Uh, but it's a, it's a big extended family. Yeah. And what social media is, is a way to connect and communicate with that community, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, we both uh, happen to uh, enjoy the uh, musings and writings of Seth Godin. Yes, in fact, um, that really reminds me when you said that of, of his concept of, of a tribe. A tribe. A tribe, um, yeah. And really what a practice is, is a perfect um, 
description of, of what uh, Seth uh, characterizes as a tribe. Yeah. It's a group of people uh, that have some common interests and mm-hmm. have some common um, uh, things together. And certainly the dental practice is, is one of those tribes uh, in the world. And one of the things that I think a successful practice does is successfully engage with their patients. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a personal, we know their names. Um, I always love to uh, remind uh, people of the theme song to Cheers. Yeah. You remember that, don't everyone you? Everyone knows your name. <laughs> you want to go where everyone knows your name. That's right. And I think one of the simple things that we can do in a dental practice to really uh, impress upon our patients the personal care and the attention that they get is to remember their name when they walk in. Yeah. And so when you think about social media in that context, social media becomes the tool uh, with which to communicate and engage with your community of, of uh, followers, of yeah. patients. Yeah. Jack, if I may transition into your questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I'd like to identify two challenges that I think doctors really need to understand and master to make full use or utility Mm -hmm. out of social media. Uh, One would be, and I think both of them are are a little bit of misconceptions, and I'd like to perhaps demystify these. One would be, I've spoken with a lot of dentists that say that as much as they love dentistry, they just don't think the content is that interesting to the lay public. Right. And I would completely disagree with that, Jack. And, and if I may, uh, and pardon my enthusiasm and passion for this, dentistry is exciting today. There's yeah, so many things happening today. And there's so many things that patients need to be informed of. For example, if I may, uh, the connection between the oral, the oral systemic connection, in other words, the way your mouth is directly connected to your overall health, yeah. and the way the health of your teeth and gums is related to heart disease, stroke, diabetes, early term birth, and certain forms of cancer. That certainly is information that, that lay, the lay audience is interested in. Yeah. So I think one misperception that doctors have is that our, our profession, our industry, just isn't that interesting to the lay public. And I believe that with proper content uh, models and with, with proper information, um, we literally have an unlimited source of information we can provide to consumers that consumers would be interested in at the lay level. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. And overcoming some misperceptions, misconceptions about dentistry you bet. is all part of that. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a big opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. I think what it's going to do is it's going to bring more people to the dance, if you will. I agree. It's going to bring the patients that are the outliers. You know, the, the, and they're not patients because they're not going to the dentist. Yeah. But bring the people that are not in relationship with the dentist to the dance, yeah. if you will. Or they're the ones that are only coming for a cleaning maybe every two years or whatever right. and, and just don't see it. They're semi-engaged. They're semi-engaged. Semi-engaged. Yeah. I think a second um, um, misperception or misconception uh, would be that um, you can't, well, social media is fun. It's a time sink. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of time to do. Yeah. And it do, I think many dentists think that while you know, their own Facebook page is kind of interesting on a personal level, they can't imagine using it uh, at, a, at a, a practice level. Yeah. And they can't imagine it um, benefiting the practice in, in terms of either new patient flow or specific benefits that they can go back and quantify. Yeah. And again, I would categorically disagree with that. I believe when social media is used properly, it can absolutely be a critical component uh, in the overall marketing uh, program for the practice. I like to talk about marketing as having three, I like to think of marketing as a three-legged milk stool. Mm-hmm. I like to think of it as a stool because... Yeah, I've heard you use this analogy. Yeah, it's, it's kind of neat because if you think of each leg, if you think of a, a stool, what mm-hmm. would happen if any one of those legs yeah. uh, wasn't there? It would topple over. One of those legs would be internal marketing, and that would be how we can convert our patients to raving fans so they go out and tell other patients about us. Mm-hmm. A second leg would be what we would call external marketing, which is what you and I would traditionally think of as advertising and marketing. Right, right. And the third leg would be what I would call digital marketing. And digital marketing is right where social media falls right in the sweet spot. Mm-hmm. And if you think about social media, it actually has a critical component in two of those three legs. That's right. Internal word marketing. Of mouth, you bet. Internal. And actually all three. Yeah. Because it can be used as, as part of the external you know, campaign as well. Yeah. So on those two topics, on one, do we have enough interesting information to share with a lay audience? I would say absolutely. And secondly, can it be used for uh, something that could be tracked you know, as a business benefit to the practice? And again, my answer to that would be absolutely. Yeah. Uh, however, I would be cautionary you know, in this, and I would be, my caution would be that there needs to be a commitment from the practice to uh, follow a model related to how they're going to use social media. It can't be casual. Yeah. It can't be something that they're involved with you know, now and again, and then they, they forget, and then they don't do it. It has to be consistent. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if they'll be consistent with it, which is one of the reasons why I like the, the tools in my social practice so well, is because you've created the four most important channels. Yeah. Um, and correct me, let's, no, let's right. check my knowledge yeah. here. Written blog, yep. uh, Facebook presence for the practice, right. a Twitter feed uh, yep. for the practice, and a YouTube channel for the practice. Mm -hmm. You've converted the four, you know, what I believe, the most relevant channels today, and you've developed the content for those that makes it very easy for the practice in a semi-custom format yep. to adapt and use the information to stay consistent with, frankly, a, a minimal time commitment on the part of the doctor uh, and team members. Yeah, and it is a minimal commitment. I think a lot of dental practices get scared away because they think it, it's just going to take tons and tons of time. But with that framework in place, uh, it, it really is not a time suck. It, no, it's, it's, not. Uh, it's not that difficult to do in just a few minutes a, a day once you kind of wrap your, you wrap your head around it. It's, it's literally so, a few minutes a day. Yeah, it is. Uh, and yet what we found is the engagement on the patient um, level. Uh, patients are very interested yeah. in this. And it also symbolically, I think, represents a progressive practice. You know, we're doing things that are progressive. Yeah. We're doing things that uh, are of interest uh, to consumers. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's just such a, a neat component for the practice. Uh, pardon my enthusiasm for it, but right. I think every practice needs to be involved in social yeah. media because really every practice it. has their own story. Yeah. Um, but every practice needs to be involved in social yeah. media, and, and frankly, it needs to be a critical component of their marketing plan. Well, we appreciate that, Gary, and uh, we know all the things that you're doing that help practices, and uh, it's exciting to see the things that you're doing online with your new site, and, and you're launching a new format of your of uh, Tacus Learning Center right away, aren't you? It, uh, it, it may be launched by the time this video goes live, good, good. Uh, but there's a new format that will lead with the blog. Uh, the idea is to develop a content-rich site yeah. that has plenty of content so that doctors and team members uh, want to uh, visit, uh, hopefully bookmark it and visit it repeatedly yeah. uh, for valuable information. Uh, one of the ways that it can be used is doctors sometimes run out of ideas uh, for a staff meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to say that uh, there's plenty of content right on our site that can be used and, and transported into a staff meeting. And uh, they can simply pick a blog post and talk about that during a team meeting and talk about how that applies to their practice. And uh, they've got a built-in staff meeting right there on the website at, at no cost, and we'd encourage them to do that. Yeah, so if you're not already familiar with TacusLearningCenter.com, be sure to go there and, and see all the great content that's there. And, and while you're there, if you want to take a Harley ride, <laughs> <laughs> you'll, uh, I'm sure there's links there to your Ride and Learn courses as well. Jack, and for those that don't ride motorcycles, it's not all Dennis Ride. Uh, we also do Race and Learn where we go to oh, racetracks right. around the country. Right. And we, do, uh, we, we combine high-performance driving with very serious dental continued education. And Jack, I know that sounds like a tough <laughs> job, but I volunteered to do it. And uh, both Ride and Learn and Race and Learn are uh, two ways that we like to bring some uh, excitement and passion yeah. to our, our profession. Well, everything you do, you do with passion. <laughs> so whether it's riding or driving or, or learning or teaching or consulting, I, I know that about you. We, so. we have a good time. We appreciate having Gary with us today, and uh, look for Gary at ta TacusLearningCenter.com, and we'll see you on, uh, on one of the rides or at our next uh, Orange Couch discussion. Thanks. Think we got a tape? It's just yeah. two takes on that one. <laughs> 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 you guys have got